Um, another question how you would go about checking your element quality, you know, more or less uh, what's important to look out for, uh, things like that. Um, I'll say FEMAP itself and most pre and post processes actually have uh, a series of element quality checks. And depending on the different quality checks, they, uh, they check things like skew angles, internal angles, um, aspect ratio, taper ratios, and uh, warping. On shell elements, you have warping. And <clears throat> it's always worth it to go through those checks and look at the results. And NASTRA in itself has limits built into it. And if you're beyond Nastran's limits, it'll uh, crash. It'll it'll uh, it'll pop out with a fatal message and say your element's too distorted to go on. Um, however, uh, FEMAP at least has a number of checks where you can check the element quality before, this. and that's a situation where it's worth running those checks and looking at it and using the defaults that FEMAP has. And the goal is to try to keep areas of high stress or expected high stress to have elements that are not distorted much and see if your distorted elements are further out and further away. Um, and that said, any sufficiently large model, it's almost impossible to run an Astran job with it without getting at least some warning message that you have distorted elements. Um, one other thing that I'll mention is that <clears throat> the limits that are listed for distortion in FEMAP <clears throat> are sort of general recommendations and and maybe I can uh, draw a little picture of it here on the graph is that a lot of elements their uh, their their deflection or stress performance as a function of um, the distortion I'll call it the distortion down on the bottom a lot of the elements will tolerate some level of distortion before they start to lose accuracy and then they'll fall off really rapidly after that. So the limits that are set in FEMAP, uh, the default limits, tend to be around an area that will create that will create an area, an error of, you know, it's like less than 2% maybe. It's a relatively light error that the limits tend. You can often go a little further on some of them. An example I have here is an aspect ratio. If you have an aspect ratio on an element of 4 to 1, your error on it's going to be less than 2%, which is hardly anything. But And that's the error limit that FEMAP puts. But if you run up to 10 to 1, you're still going to have an error of less than 10%. So the key on a lot of distortions is the limits listed as formal limits are limits that give you almost that produce almost no error. Uh, most of them, if you're not, most of them you can push a little bit further beyond the limit as long as the whole model isn't falling into that area, or your accuracy isn't as critical. So I guess that's how I would <coughs> that's how I would look at, at things like that. Um, the next 